At the moment, Ultravox are in the recording studio laying down the tracks for a new LP. Can you stick a bit of, uh, sort of room sound on this tune? Many of those tracks will be produced on one of the group's electronic instruments. Can you give us four in there now, kid? Well, stop playing tricks on me. Can we try it again from the top? From the milk bottle sound. Ultravox have been using synthesizers for some time. A synthesizer is a musical instrument. But because it's a very modern electronic musical instrument using lots of high technology, it gives us so much more control over the sound than we've ever had with any other previous musical instrument. The first requisite of any musical instrument is that it has to have something to make a sound. And the synthesizer has a part that vibrates, but electronically, so you can't actually see it moving like you can see the string of a guitar or the reed of a clarinet. But it does vibrate electronically, and it's called an oscillator. The oscillator is an electrical circuit which produces regular signals. Oscillators can produce signals of different shapes. The different shapes can produce different types of sounds. The oscillator is connected to a keyboard. The keys trigger signals of different frequencies, different musical notes. What happens next? The sound passes along the audio chain from the oscillator into the filter. And there we can modify the sound by softening off those sharp points on the oscilloscope. And the softer it becomes, so the softer we hear the tone. The filter is another electrical circuit. It changes the shape of the signals and that changes the tone. The final stage in the audio chain is called an amplifier. And this determines the amplitude of the sound wave, or how big it is. And the bigger it is, the more of it we hear, so it's like a volume control. So between them, the electrical circuits produce and shape the electrical signals. This, um this synthesizer here um, is one of the first synthesizers that was commercially available. I mean, it's quite an old one, but we still use them. Um, they're, they're very basic synthesizers. It's an analog synthesizer that uh, was developed by Dr. Robert Moog quite a few years ago. Um, the problem with these things is this is this is the type of synthesizer we had when I joined the band at first. And when you'd play sort of hot, sweaty clubs, the things we got to tune all the time. Um, it's, it's basically a three oscillator synthesizer, so you can you can actually switch off one of the voices, one of the oscillators, and get a very thin sound, very very normal, basic sound. But when you start adding the other oscillators, giving it a bit more depth and body, you can tune these things together. You hear it tuning into itself there. And this is the actual synth that we did, um, the sort of Vienna part on the bass part, the, uh, you know. But I mean, th these things um, now, are, uh, you can't buy them now. I mean, uh, technology's moved on uh, far too much to, to uh, sell people things like this anymore. It's, a, it's actually a, it's a, an antique synthesizer now. You know, it's about 15 years old. Uh, we've moved on to this type of thing now. Um, which it's a German synthesizer. Actually, this uh, this synthesizer, when you create a sound on it, it sounds as though, although you've never heard the sound before, you never heard anything like the sound before. It sounds as though it should be an acoustic instrument because it has overtones. It's got two thousand waveforms in it, so the actual waveforms can change when you play the the sound like a normal instrument would. And when you play one note on a piano, there's so many overtones and so many waves and forms inside that sound that this does the same type of thing, except you're making totally inhuman noises from it. Now what we've got in, in this, uh, this thing today, in this synthesizer, is, uh, is me. I mean, that's me going, ah. <laughs> uh, 
this particular instrument here or any of these instruments, you can give to you know 20 different keyboard players and they'll come up with 20 different types of sound and 20 different feels that you can that a keyboard player could play. Uh, it just it, it does anything you want it to do. Once you've actually written a song, then you've got to decide what type of sound uh, you want to use to put the, you know, the best way to put the song across. 